We, the First Holy Communion class of St. Thomas the Apostle Parish, welcome our family who are with us today. This is, this is an exciting and joyful day for us because we are going to receive the body and blood of Jesus for the first time in the sacrament of Holy Eucharist. We thank you, our parents and catechists, for bringing us to this day. With your help, guidance, and example, and most of all, especially your faith and love. We have been invited to the Lord's Supper. We pray for your continued guidance and love. May all the love and joy that we share with our Lord this day continue to bring us ever closer to him. In the sacrament of Holy Eucharist, may God bless us and our, our, and our families today and every day. things that any parish priest can do in his parish is to celebrate the sacrament of First Holy Communion. It brings me certainly always great joy uh, to have this opportunity to be with you and the classes that were here before and to celebrate the communion for the many, many children that I have had the experience of being with in my life. I thank you all for supporting uh, our parish and for supporting the children and preparing them for this day. Certainly this is a most unprecedented. But one of the most remarkable days in a child's life is the day of the First Communion. And Mrs. Habern is over here, one of our teachers. I, I think it's in your room I have my picture of my First Holy Communion. God, I was a good looking kid. <laughs> I mean, I gotta tell you, my sister was a twin sister. She had nothing on me, you know, but, <laughs> but my picture still hangs in her room and I hope and that will serve as an inspiration to any children that, that pass through the halls of St. Thomas, whether it's in school or in prep, uh, to, to know the communion is a special moment and day in their life. So let us thank God for the day. Uh, earlier this morning it was raining and now the sun's out. So the Lord is certainly shining upon this church and upon, uh, certainly upon the special gift of your children as they embrace the presence of the Lord for the first time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So we come here on this First Communion Day again to break bread and to be nourished in the life of our Lord and to lift up our children to the presence of the glory of God as they embrace his presence in their life. As we gather here in faith, let us be humble, ask the Lord for mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life and the joy of the angels. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you feed us and you nourish us with your life that we might reflect you in all we do. Christ, have mercy. And you embrace the little children, O Lord, and you entrust to them the gift of your abiding presence. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. 
We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. And Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, and Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You will honor the Holy One, you will honor our Lord, and you will honor the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so as to veer the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's all sit down now as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The followers of Jesus spent their time learning from the Apostles and they were like family to each other. They also broke bread and prayed together. Everyone was amazed at the many miracles and wonders that the apostles worked. All of the Lord's followers often met together and they shared everything they had. They would sell their property and possessions and give the money to whoever needed it. Day after day, they met together in the temple. They broke bread together in the temple. They broke bread together in different homes and shared their food happily and freely while praising God. Everyone liked them, and each day the Lord added to their group others who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Sing 
Mary, sign her up. All right. <laughs> the Lord be with you. The reading of the Holy Gospel is according to Luke. Glory to your Lord. Two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village named Emmaus, which is about seven miles from Jerusalem. As they were thinking and talking about what had happened, Jesus came there and started to walk along beside them. But they did not know who he was. And Jesus asked them, what were you talking about as you walked along? Two of them stood there looking sad and gloomy, and then one named Cleophas asked Jesus, are you the only person from Jerusalem who didn't know what was happening there these past few days? What do you mean, Jesus asked. And they answered, those things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth. By what he did and said, he showed them he was a powerful prophet who pleased God and all the people. Then the chief priests and our leaders had him arrested, sentenced him to die on a cross. We had hoped that he would be the one to set Israel free. But it's already been three days since these things happened. Some women of our group surprised us. They had gone to the tomb early in the morning, did not find the body of Jesus. They came back saying that they had seen a visit of angels who told them he was alive. And some men from our group went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see Jesus either. And then Jesus asked the two disciples, why can't you understand? How can you be so slow to believe all the prophets said? Did you know that the, not know the Messiah would have to suffer before he was given in his glory? Jesus then explained everything written about him in the scriptures, beginning with the law of Moses and the books of the prophets. When the two of them came near the village where they were going, Jesus seemed to be going further, and they begged him, stay with us. It's already late. The sun is going down. So Jesus went into the house to stay with them. After Jesus sat down to eat, he took some bread. He blessed it, broke it, gave it to them. At once they knew who he was, and, but he disappeared. And they said to each other, when he, when he talked with us along the road and explained the scriptures to us, didn't it warm our hearts? So they got right up and returned to Jerusalem. The two disciples found the 11 apostles and the others gathered together. And they learned from the group that the Lord was, going al was really alive and appeared to Peter. The disciples from Emmaus told what had happened on the road and how they had come to know our Lord when he broke the bread. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the gospel free us from our sins. I thank all of you again for... Uh, the efforts that you have made to support the children in our parish and, uh, and, and making the First Communion possible for them. I know that these masks are a little bit inconvenient and it's not exactly what we wanted, but it's more important that the Lord touch your children today. And, and I'm grateful to you. I'm, I'm grateful to Colleen for her many efforts, for the teachers, uh, uh, for Maria and, and uh, uh, the people that put this together, and certainly for Kevin for working on this. The most special day in the life of a parish priest is Sunday. And that's when people come to church. So, of course, many times I come over here early on Sunday morning. I'm the first one that comes over. I open the church up, say my prayers, and I ride over my bike. And sometimes I'll just sit out in my beach chair if it's a nice day and greet everybody coming in. And I, uh, even if I'm not doing the Mass, I try to make sure that I come to Mass. Because I, the only time I see the people is they come to this house, to the house of God. You know, and I'm the landlord here, and so it's important that I see them. The second most special day in the life is of, of me here at St. Thomas is a Saturday morning. I love Saturday mornings because I don't have to get up that early. Now, I'm usually up every morning around 4 o'clock. Saturday morning, I don't get up till like quarter of 5. <laughs> Unless Pixie the cat jumps into bed and she wakes me up. But I have a regular routine on Saturday morning. And before this pandemic hit, uh, my, my, my routine was just interrupted. I've just been so discombobulated because my Saturday morning routine was just, just kind of interfered with. 
But my Saturday routine before the pandemic was, it's been the same for years. I get up, I take the mail to the post office, I get down to McDonald's at Larkin's Corner, I have breakfast with the old people down there, same thing every Saturday. It's an egg McMuffin, it's a hash brown, medium coffee, two extra cream in it. And I sit and I talk with these folks. Some are from Chester. Uh, some have businesses in there, in there. But I, I usually, it's a good socializing hour for a half, a less socializing time for a half hour or so. And then I go to Walmart. And I wander around in there, pick up important things we need for the rectory, like potato chips, cookies, cinnamon buns and maybe some laundry detergent. And then I go to the dollar store. The dollar store has interesting things in it. As you know, you only pay a dollar in the dollar store for everything. And you get a lot of stuff in the dollar store. And I usually, I'm usually back here by about 9 o'clock, quarter after 9 in the morning. And even though Saturdays when I have to do a funeral, I can still make it down there and get back for the funeral at 10.30. Now, when this pandemic struck, my whole routine went discombobulated. I couldn't go into McDonald's. And they had restrictions in getting into the stores. The dollar store didn't open till later. And I thought to myself, I need an alternative plan. So my alternative plan was to go to Wawa and get a sandwich, go to the post office, and then instead of going to Walmart, I would do grocery shopping at Giant. So I get down to Giant one Saturday morning, and the senior citizens are in there between six and eight. The senior citizens are the white hair people. They let us in early. <laughs> so where did I go? And I had a regular list of stuff that I needed. Cinnamon buns, <laughs> coffee cake, Cookies, potato chips, cat food, milk, juice, eggs. And this particular Saturday, I went through my, law, my grocery list and I realized that I needed diet soda. Caffeine free, because I can't take caffeine. It shoots my blood pressure up. So I'm looking either for diet, caffeine, Pepsi, or Coke. Now, up until a couple of weeks ago, at the Giant, they had arrows in the aisles. You can only go down a certain way, and you can go back up a certain way. And pretty much, I tried to follow it. But this particular Saturday, I wasn't paying attention to the arrows on the floor. I was looking at the signs above, and it said soda. And I said, that's what I want. And I started down the aisle, and I was going the wrong way. And with that, a senior citizen was coming down with her shopping cart quite aggressively. And she stopped me dead in my tracks and said, Hey, you, mister, you're going the wrong way. I said, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to go the wrong way. You got to go all the way around the store. I said, I have a bad knee. I had surgery. She said, I have a bad back. Get out of here. <laughs> I gave her my priest card, and I'll see, I said, I'll see you in confession. <laughs> and don't think you're getting away with two Hail Marys. It was an embarrassment for me. She really let me have it. But I did get my Diet Coke, caffeine-free. And I share that with your story today because in the story in the Gospel today, the Bible story today, is about two friends of Jesus and they're going the wrong way. They're supposed to be with the other apostles, but they left and they got lost and they're going the wrong way. Now, Jesus wasn't like that lady in the grocery store that yelled and screamed. He was very patient and gentle with them. And when he revealed himself to them, they realized that they were going the wrong way. 
and they run them, they start it back the right way. Now, how does this affect us today, what we celebrate in First Holy Communion? You see, the presence of Jesus, our Lord, in my life will always give me the special help that I need, that as I go through my life, I will always know the right way to go. And if I, if I err and I turn around and I find myself going in the wrong direction, that he will very, very gently nudge me as he did these two disciples to say, hey, listen, you got to turn around and you have to go the right way. Holy Communion is about Jesus, our Lord, living in my heart and my life to help me as I begin to grow up and to grow old, to know always that his way is always not just simply the right way, it's the best way. He is very good, very patient with all of us. And today, your children these young people of our parish, for the very first time in their life, will have an experience in the joy of the risen Lord. They have not yet begun to go the wrong way, but communion in their life will always keep them steadfast and directed on the right way. I pray for you and I pray for them that their life will be long, healthy, and happy. And then many, many times in their earthly journey, they will come to this church or one similar to this. And they will hear the words of consecration, my body, my blood, for your eternal life. And that they will humbly embrace the good Lord in their life. And he will live in their heart. And he will always be a great inspiration to them that as they make their way through life, they will always know that they are, they are living their journey in life the way God wants them to live it. So God bless you, little people. I always remember my first Holy Communion Day. It's a treasure day of my life. And I pray that this day for you will always live in your heart and life. And then as you grow up and you get older, you get married and you form your own families, you'll be able to share with them the story of your first Holy Communion. And that they're the lives of, your, of their children, your grandchildren, will be enriched by the story of, you, of, the, of this day in their life so that the church will continue to feed, to nourish, and all of us until the kingdom of God is fulfilled and always be there for us to help us to live our life's journey in the right way. Bless you all. And if you could please stand now, we'll have the general intercessions. When our Lord Jesus walked on earth, he called little ones to himself so he could bless and teach them. Today he calls these children of our parish closer to him in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. United with them, let us pray for our needs and the needs of all of God's people. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishops, and all the clergy, that they may continue to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, hear our prayer. For our world leaders, that they strive to work for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our parish community, that Jesus in the Holy Eucharist will always be the source and summit of our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. For our Holy Communi- first Holy Communicants on this special day and always, that they will draw closer to Jesus in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Francis and Sister Nicoletta, in thanksgiving for their leadership and service to our parish, and with prayers for each of their continued journeys, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all those who are ill and suffering, especially for those affected in any way by the COVID-19 pandemic, that they may find comfort in the presence of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may live forever with Jesus in the joy of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And so, Heavenly Father, accept the humble prayers that we offer you this day, for they are made through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the bread of our life and the joy of angels and saints, and who remains with you forever and ever. Amen. Would you please sit down now as we prepare the altar? There is one Lord, there is one faith, there is one Father of us all, and through His Son, who came to save us, there is one God living in us all. now that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all of his church. And grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just, truly, almighty and eternal God, to everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal Lord, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For at this last supper with his apostles, establishing for all the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery. You made them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wonderful sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and of earth sing the new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels and saints cry out without end as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, 
the fount of all holiness. And make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. Jesus, our Lord. In a similar way, <clears throat> when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it through the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Jesus. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all of the clergy. Remember also all of our other departed brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, the glorious martyrs, our patrons Thomas and Michael and Catherine of Siena and all of the angels and the saints who have been pleasing to you throughout all the ages of time, that we too might merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and forever. Kindly stand with me, please, now. Seriously. 
At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace and the love of our Lord be with you always. God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the whole world. And blessed are those who are called here to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy that you come under my roof. Only say the word and my soul will be healed. And may the body of the risen Christ keep us safe for everlasting life. Amen. Yeah. 
drink the bread, come drink the wine, come share the
cup of blessing, partake of precious blood. River of salvation, holy cleansing tide, fountain of redemption flowing.
Parents of First Holy Communicants, please stand and join us in reciting the Parents' Prayer, which can be found in your program. For the privilege, gift, and awesome responsibility of parenthood, we thank you, Father. For the gift of love and the fruit of love, which is life, we thank you, Father, for the vision of faith, for the strength of hope, for the transforming power of love. We thank you, Father, for all that is good and beautiful in our family lives, for the ability to praise you as a family, the grace to thank you, and for the gift of the reverence for life. We thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, it is our duty and privilege, always and everywhere, to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of life. We marvel at your beautiful creation. We thank you for the children you gave us to care for. We thank you for the love and life they share with us. We thank you for their health and for the joy in their hearts today. But above all, we thank you for giving each of us your only Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all of eternity and that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of the body and blood of our Lord who lives forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Can you sit down now just for a minute, all right? As I said earlier, I, I think the most special day in any, any child's life is the day of their first Holy Communion. And this is all part of a plan that is bigger than me and has to do with God's design for all of us. God creates us in his image and his likeness. And there are many, many religions in the world, but God has given to you and to me the gift of being Catholic. And so we make our way through this world of being Catholic. We embrace the presence of Jesus Christ. But we certainly believe that our Lord gave, gave us this special gift of his body and blood, his risen life, so that he could live within us and that he could help our life to be conformed to his. And that's my journey in life. It doesn't happen all at once. It just happens over time. 
the more and more as we grow in age and the more and more we're a part of this and the more and more of our life becomes a reflection of his. I congratulate you in the name of the entire parish. As I said, there is no greater day in, in a parish life or a parish priest's life than to celebrate First Communion. I wish you all in the great challenge that you have in being good parents and being role models for your children and that they will grow up and you will be as proud of them every day of, of their life as you are of this moment in theirs. And that you will do everything that it takes to, ha to give them every opportunity to embrace their life, to discover their gifts, to use them to the best of their ability, and to keep this close to their heart and life. Because the last thing we ever want to do in our life is find ourselves going the wrong way. And he will always direct us in that way. Today begins a journey for your children that is unique. I pray that God's grace will always be with them each step that they take. Would you please stand now? <clears throat> And the Lord be with you. With your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God to bless us. May the gracious and loving God that has called us to the table and nourished us with the body and blood of his beloved Son continue to live within our hearts always. May the goodness of his life and the joy of his presence be reflected in all we say and think and do. May God's peace live in your home and in your family. May your, may your family home be a place of great joy and happiness all the days of your life that you live together. Amen. And may God watch over and bless you and keep all of you safe now. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth from here and serve our Lord both humbly and joyfully. Thanks be to God. And I thank you all for making this day present for the parish and for your children. God bless you all. Take the word of God with you as you go. Take the seeds of God's word and make them grow. Oh, in peace to serve the world. In peace to serve the world. Take the love of God, the love of God with you as you go. Yeah.